So what I suppose a lot of Christians don't really realise about their own religion or um, don't really realise in light of, uh, I suppose, St. Augustine's repudiation of the old gods of the Greek tradition in um, City of God is um, the fact that the term God itself or our contemporary or historical conception of God in the West, um, that, and frankly, the East, derives in Kramer traditions in the East, uh, derives... Uh, from Greek thought. Well, it doesn't, strictly speaking, arise from Greek thought. It arises from Jewish thought, which percolated in the third century via the Septuagint, um, translated by, or, or the translation was ordered by Ptolemy II Philadelphus um, in about 325 BCE. Um, and then this uh, came into Greek culture uh, 300 years before the, the birth of Christ. And um, in that tradition, um, we have, uh, you know, Greek culture obviously uh, expanded into Roman culture and so on and so forth in sort of roughly this sort of time as well, with um, the early Roman kings and then the Roman Republic, et cetera, et cetera, um, a couple of centuries before Christ and empire eventually after that, or slightly before Christ, emperor started. So, I mean, um, yeah, uh, the words like in Latin, Deus, Zeus, right? I mean, and apart from the cognate similarities, I mean, how do we really conceive of God in the Christian tradition? You know, Michelangelo and uh, this um, mural or paint, this fresco on the ceiling of um, the Sistine Chapel, right? A bearded man on a cloud, the host of angels, right? That is Zeus. That is how we think of Zeus. Uh, old bearded man on a cloud, Zeus. Likewise, Satan, Saturn. No, and um, if you look, like look at hard enough into sort of um, the the mystery and the um, the kind of allegorical nature of kind of deep Jewish mystical thoughts, I think you find out eventually that sort of every term in ancient Hebrew, every uh, term in um, uh, the Torah, and so on, via the um, I guess Kabbalah or uh, the other texts. So it, it kind of all has some deep mystical association. I've been looking into the idea of Christian hell recently, Sheol, right? Which initially just meant a place of silence, forgetfulness, and something else. And it's translated into grave 31 times in the Bible and to the afterlife 31 times in the Bible. Silence, forgetfulness, and desolate or something, isn't it? Um, something else. Uh, it just means death. It means death in general. I'm pretty certain. And um, where does all this like fire and brimstone come from? I think the only thing said about it was wailing and gnashing of teeth in Christianity, or that's the only thing that Christ said about it. In as such, it being quite vague still. I mean, a wailing and gnashing of teeth can mean like um, compounded human misery in life and gnashing of teeth, uh, you know, wrath in life. Sub when someone's subject to, you know, the wrath of others, that is hell, sure. The hell is more like a living state, potentially. So, um, yeah, as we all know, so um, not necessarily Christ himself, but the early church fathers of Christianity ended up causing quite a bit of trouble, I'd have said. Since I think they took this baptism thing, I've got like, John the Baptist heavily involved in the foundation of the early church by writing a gospel for one thing, among other things, I suspect also he did, and um, using baptism to expedite the process of joining what is now Christianity as opposed to strictly speaking Judaism um, in order to protect Judaism, right? Whereas um, Judaism by that point, by Ptolemy II Philadelphus and the uh, the translation, the Septuagint, into Coptic or Greek, um, uh, Christ, uh, Judaism is already being preserved in the Roman Empire, and Jewish scholarship is is valued in that culture because <laughs> you know they're not quite that racist in ancient Greece and Rome. But this new radical sect, Christianity, the sect who are um, probably building their own base of influence um, at this time via asserting that Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah, or is the Messiah, even though 
Jesus isn't around at this point. He writes no gospel. Um, yeah, and they're going around preaching, and uh, Jesus' brother James getting burns because um, probably violating the terms set down by Jesus at the end of what I suspect was a stag do. Yeah, a stag do prank. Like what what happens on the stag stays on the stag. I said we never speak of this, and it's like. We never speak of your life and ministry and, 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 and like, other people will. And yeah, like maybe if these series of events about 30 or 40 years after the crucifixion hadn't occurred, you know, Jesus would have just found his place in history as a, a minor uh, historical figure of relative, of some import, of some notes, you know, but not this like uh, deity man almost. And I don't think Jesus ever wanted that, really. I don't think he ever wanted that associated with him. But it, was, um, it came about, I suspect, as, as a result of the political and social finaglings and meanderings and um, proselytising of the four gospel writers in the first instance and then their adherents. And they were doing it basically for power and prestige or something, or money even. And, um, you know, it's nothing to do with like, preserving Judaism in in the Western tradition, because we have the Septuagint from 300 years before Christ, valued of Jewish scholarship. Now you've got Christians who um, have been enticed into the faith on this putative basis of it being expedited passage into Judaism, and they're getting chucked to the lions eventually under Caligula, etc. And the rest, as they say, is history. I mean, yeah, it comes about as like, I think kind of a pointless religion, frankly. <laughs> And, um, you know, if you want to be Jewish in the Greek tradition, you can. Furthermore, like, um, in the Greek tradition, like, we actually get our conception of God from the Greek tradition, actually probably via Judaism to some extent. And, like, those ancient diasporas eventually building up the populations um, in the Greek peninsula, if you like, or the archipelago, whichever it is. It is an archipelago, more like, isn't it? Or peninsula pelago. <laughs> um, yeah, it is a little bit erroneous and pointless and fripperous as a religion. And like, you know, out of hell and Christianity, like, I'm pretty certain that all got in there via Norse traditions and so on, didn't it? Like, hell is a figure in Nordic religion, no? So it's half woman half corpse thing i know one one woman like that <laughs> yeah yeah like... <clears throat> wrinkled old corpse <laughs> i like that joke where jesus comes back to where the disciples are staying and they're all drunk and eating taking out food and ask people what's going on and what's the punchline? People doing on AMD. Like, don't hold out the punchline on me, VL now. Come on, man. How's it end? I have it your way then. You with your VPN, so I can't see that you're viewing my videos. He says, uh, Come on, Judas. I guess that is what you're saying. Came into some. Man, we just shouted us all beers and food. <laughs> I, yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. I still like the idea of, um, yeah, they're trying to like stitch up Judas and like make him all guilty and afraid, and like make him afraid in the first instance that Jesus can try and take over the country. Then they just sort of kick him some money. He's all like, oh, like, you little weasel for taking money and selling out your mate. And like, not only did, does he sell him out, he sells him cheap. And um, he's getting tricked into killing himself you know, at, outside the city gates next to the hanging tree, which is what I'm imagining in my mind. And um, Jesus is anaesthetized on the cross. He's feeling basically no pain um, with opium. And the centurion or like the auxiliary or legion or whoever, after about six hours of that, stabs him in the spleen right and um which you can survive 
<clears throat> and then Judas kills himself with a bit of, or tries to kill himself with a bit of rope that never take his way. This is what I'm thinking. I reckon Judas was that dumb, you know, just hanging on by a thread. He eventually kills him, tries to kill himself. Rope snaps, obviously, and then Ju Jesus is all like, "Thank you." <laughs> like, yeah, that's what happened. I reckon, roughly, <clears throat> and like. Judas would be like yeah, the most trusting, most idiotic and credulous among them. And um, in a sense, it is kind of a sacred act. But, you know, he's, like Judas, I guess, is like a lovable buffoon, isn't he? Like an oaf. Like, it's almost like thick as two short planks, but he's that one in the group, like, who's always getting in the neck. And it's the butt of everyone's jokes. <laughs> and, like, that never changed. I, that's probably... Something somewhat wholesome and good, and potentially holy, I think. <laughs> that sort of interaction. But yeah, anyway, bye-bye, everyone. Thank you for your comments, VL, now. Always lovely to talk to you.